There are some exciting news from Google, but there's also a bit of controversy to unpack. So let's just get started. Google just announced a massive update with their video generation model called Vio. This model is part of their DeepMind project and now it can create video clips from a single reference image. Essentially, you give it a picture and some text instructions and it can generate a whole video clip based on that. For example, they showed off an image prompt where a woman's hands are holding a large amethyst crystal. Her nails are painted purple and she has a gold ring on her pinky finger. The new model took that and generated a video clip that looks just like the original style, but animated. As you can see, there's no loss in quality, no glitches or anything like that. It's incredibly realistic, maybe even a bit too realistic. Another example was an elderly woman wearing a straw hat and a pink jacket sitting next to a brown and white dog. Both are looking off into the distance with serene expressions. The text prompt for the video was, a woman gazes lovingly at her loyal dog. It's pretty amazing how it captures the essence and details from just a single image. Now, they also introduced Video FX Update, which now allows developers to create full HD videos from text prompts using Vio. So whether you're an artist, content creator, or developer, this tool could actually change the basics of how you produce video content. Google has also introduced a new Gemini AI button in the side panel of several Google Suite apps like Gmail, Google Drive, Docs, Sheets, and Slides. With this button, you can ask questions, write emails, and get summaries of documents and email threads. However, it's still unclear when these features will be available for everyone to use as developers are still working on making the interfaces user-friendly. Now, while this technology is super exciting, Google is facing some serious challenges with their AI search features. As we all already know, recently they rolled out AI overviews in Google search, designed to give you a quick summary of complex questions, kind of like a smarter, more detailed search result. However, there have been some hiccups. People on social media have pointed out some odd and inaccurate AI overviews. For instance, there were reports of AI overviews providing strange or misleading advice from user-generated content on forums. One funny example was an overview about how many rocks someone should eat. Obviously, that's not a common or sensible question. Now, Google has been quick to address these issues. First, they rolled back the new AI overviews feature in search, and then they released a post saying that, They've made technical improvements to better detect nonsensical queries and limit satire or humor content. They've also refined how they handle user-generated content to avoid misleading information. Plus, they've put additional guardrails in place for sensitive topics like news and health. It's clear Google is committed to improving these tools, but the recent mishaps have highlighted some of the challenges they face in making sure their AI is accurate and reliable. All right, now we also have some news regarding Elon Musk's AI company, XAI, and their latest developments with the Grok AI chatbot. If you're already familiar with Grok, you know it's a pretty impressive tool that's available online and through the X social platform. Well, it looks like XAI is gearing up to roll out two new modes for Grok, Socrates and DEI. According to the X Daily News, XAI might soon introduce these two new modes. Grok already has a few modes, including normal mode, fun mode, and the recently announced unhinged mode, which offers a more unpredictable and entertaining interaction style. First, let's talk about the DEI mode. This stands for diversity, equity, and inclusion. When you select this mode, Grok will be described as the senior vice president of DE&I, okay? Even the Grok icon gets a makeover and becomes more colorful. The idea here is that Grok will handle responses with a focus on inclusivity and sensitivity. Now, there's been some chatter on social media about this mode. For example, testing catalog on X mentioned that they're curious if this is Elon Musk poking fun at companies like Google or if it's a genuine effort to promote DE&I. Honestly, I think it could be a bit of both. Knowing Elon, he loves to stir the pot, but it also seems like a must-have addition given today's emphasis on inclusivity. According to another X post, this mode is already implemented and functioning on the standalone version of Grok, but it's not available to the public just yet. The standalone Grok is only accessible in the US for now, and if you ask Grok an incorrect question in this mode, it's designed to handle the response thoughtfully, addressing all the nuances. Now the Socrates mode. Named after the famous philosopher, this mode isn't operational yet, but there are hints it's in the works. While details are scarce, we can imagine that Socrates mode might involve Grok taking on a more inquisitive and thoughtful personality, prompting users to think deeper and engage in more meaningful conversations. It's actually exciting to see how XAI is expanding Grok's capabilities, making it more versatile and engaging for users. 
All right, now, if you're into making videos, podcasts, movies, or even games, you're gonna love this. Eleven Labs, already known for their AI-generated human voices and music, has just launched a sound effects AI tool that lets you create custom sound effects just by typing in a prompt. So here's how it works. You type in what kind of sound effect you need. Maybe it's an explosion, a creaky door, or some spooky background noise. And the AI generates up to 22 seconds of that sound for you. You get at least four downloadable audio clip options to choose from, so you can pick the one that fits your project best. Eleven Labs actually partnered with Shutterstock to build a library and train their AI model. Shutterstock is a big name in stock media, and they've licensed their content to lots of AI companies like OpenAI, Meta, and Google. This means the sound effects you get from Eleven Labs are based on high-quality professional clips. Create any sound you can imagine. Now, let's talk about the cost. The sound effects tool is free to use, but there are paid tiers if you want to use the sounds commercially. If you're on the free tier, you'll need to give credit to 11 Labs by including 11 Labs.io in your project's title. Free users get 10,000 characters per month for writing prompts. For sound effects, it uses 40 characters per second of audio if you set the duration yourself, or 200 characters if you go with the default duration. There are already plenty of libraries out there for sound effects, but they can be pricey or hard to navigate. Eleven Lab says their tool is designed to generate rich, immersive soundscapes quickly, affordably, and at scale. This could be a game changer for creators who need specific sounds without the hassle. Eleven Labs isn't the only one in the game, though. Other AI developers like Stability AI and Meta are also working on their own text-to-sound generators. Stability AI has stable audio, which can create music and sound effects. And Meta's AudioCraft models can generate natural sounds like wind or traffic. All right, finally, I have to tell you about this super cool invention from researchers at Cambridge University, a robotic third thumb. And it's not some weird extra finger made of flesh, it's a mechanical digit that's surprisingly easy to use. The researchers showed off this third thumb in a demo video and it looks like it can be used for all sorts of things. People were doing everyday tasks, playing games like Jenga, soldering, and even playing the guitar with it. It's pretty impressive. It's designed to be inclusive for all sorts of people. They tested it with folks aged from three to 96 years old. Out of 596 people, only 13 couldn't use it within the first minute. That's a 98% success rate. It didn't matter if you were young, old, left-handed, or right-handed. Almost everyone got the hang of it quickly. So how do you control this third thumb? It's funny, actually, because there are no sensors or probes attached to your hand. Instead, you use your toes. Moving your left big toe makes the thumb go up and down, and your right toe moves it across your palm. You can make all sorts of precise movements just by wiggling your toes. The researchers believe this third thumb could be useful for a wide range of people, regardless of their age, gender, lifestyle, or even whether they're tech savvy or not. It could help with daily tasks, work, or just for fun. Plus, it might be a great tool for people who are missing a finger or two. All right, don't forget to hit that subscribe button for more updates. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll catch you in the next one.